Hello friends and welcome to the exam room with Nurse Alice. I'm your host Nurse Alice and this is the show where we take a closer look at things going on in the world today and I want to thank you so much uh, for joining us this wonderful Monday evening as you do every Monday right here on uh, Facebook live on blackdoctor.org's page. Uh, blackdoctor.org is a wonderful outlet. Please make sure that you stay tuned Follow them on Facebook, look at their website. They have tons of health and wellness information. But for tonight, it's all about the exam room. And so thank you for um, coming in. And um, you guys, we have a wonderful show lined up for you. Um, and before we get started, I want to make sure that you start your watch party, uh, share it with your friends, get everybody going, get something to drink, kick back, relax, because we're going to have a fabulous conversation about um, something that's been bubbling in the news. And um, not that this is just for the ladies, um, but a lot of this is stemming from things that ladies have gone through or are going through. Um, and it's about what we wear, where, and why it matters. So I have a lovely, lovely, amazing panel joining us this evening. And guys, listen, go ahead and get your comments in. Uh, Bironi, hello, thank you for joining. People are joining the conversation. Um, and let me introduce our fabulous guest for this evening. We are going to start with the lovely Rashawn Ali. Y'all, she has a passion for sports and empowering young women. Uh, Y'all know her. She is known and beloved across the airwaves, a revered multimedia personality with sports and in the sports and entertainment industries, Atlanta native. Um, and she's, was on, she's been on local radio for the past well, not the past, but for nearly over 15, 15 years on Hot 107.9, V103, 94.5, 107.5. And then she made her transition into television, working as a freelance sports anchor for HLN and CNN, sideline reporter for CBS Sports Network, NBA TV. And you all know and love her as well as a, a co-host for TV One's Sister Circle. And she also has her own podcast, The Cool Soror Podcast. She's an author. She has a nonprofit. She got a lot going on. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you so much. And then also joining the conversation, we have beautiful uh, Angel Ray. She is a, a sports analyst and sideline reporter specializing in college hoops, NBA, and the WNBA. And she's covered women's basketball, NCAA tournament, the WNBA finals, all-star game, for NBA TV, College WBB for ESPN, ACC Network, Raycom Sports, gosh, Lee, SEC Network, as well as contributing as the WNBA Atlanta Dream sideline reporter for Fox Sports. And she's currently working for Fox Sports Ohio as the Cleveland Cavaliers sideline reporter and Spectrum Sports Net covering the Los Angeles Sparks. Hello, Angel. How are you? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. And then obviously, I'm just really, really excited to be on this panel. I revere all these women, so I'm excited about the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. And we, we're, I'm so excited for, for you all. And then also rounding out our conversation, um, we have the lovely Love E. Uh, <laughs> easily. Oh, y'all like how I said that, huh? I did. I did. <laughs> You're a certified personal stylist, published author, and has over a decade of experience in personal styling and the fashion industry. She's worked with hundreds of clients to achieve their personal best, including during New York Fashion Week on TBS, Fox, HLN, CNN, MSNBC, VH1, and Disney, just to name a few. And she's also the founder and CEO of Styled by Love E, a personal styling on-demand mobile app for busy professional men and women. Hi, Love E. How are you? Hi, thank you for having me. All right. Okay. Y'all, this conversation is going to get good. Everyone is saying hello. They love the panel. They love everyone. Uh, Carlos, Tanya, Emmy, Diane, Linda, Latanya, Susan, like they're all coming in. Hello, greetings. Thank you. Um, Philadelphia is watching. Thank you, Philadelphia. Um, oh, so let's get this conversation going. Okay. So um, last Monday, I think it was last Monday, um, during her uh, debut um, for um, Monday Night Football, we had uh, the beautiful Maria Taylor. Um, she was reporting, um, and um, unfortunately, there was a gentleman by the name of Dan McNeil, who was a Chicago radio host for um, 670 The Score, had something to say, y'all, about what uh, Maria Taylor was wearing, and he actually um, 
tweeted a picture of what she was wearing, which I found nothing wrong with. It actually was pretty cute. Um, and made the comment, NFL sideline reporter or host for the ABN annual awards presentation. Now, let me be honest. I had to, I had to Google what ABN was. I didn't know what it was. I don't know if y'all knew what it was, but um, it is adult video news and it's kind mm. of Oscars for porn. That was creepy because I really had no idea. And just to tell you a little bit about Dan, 59 year old man from Texas, He's always done radio and he's kind of spent the last 28 years of where in his radio career, kind of where he's at. So I don't think he's used to change and acclimating and all these other things. And apparently wow. he has a fashion swag. But the lovely Maria didn't uh, waste time to um, respond. And uh, this is what she said. Look. Uh, well, Danny Beerus, if you would like to continue making sexist comments about me, Please bring your misogyny with you to the NBA countdown doubleheader I'll be hosting tomorrow night, aka come see me. Yeah. Um, and hey, ladies, remember, you can wear whatever you feel confident in. I'm with that. So, ladies, um, and, and let me let me start with either Rashawn or Angel. You have worked in sports, beautiful women in sports. It's male dominated. <sighs> I mean, have, have you ex ever experienced something similar to this? And I mean, what do you think about what happened? Go ahead, Angel. I would like Rashawn to oh, start. Wow. This, okay. <laughs> unless you don't want me to, only because I remember getting into this business and I thought it was very important to even have that conversation about appearance for black women Ooh. on camera. And so whether it be hair, whether it be, you know, just the makeup or just the look overall, I just feel like there are so many um, black women in this business that, you know, I could look up to to ask. So that's why I'm asking you to go first, because I feel like you've been in the game. You understand it. You you. I, I just would like to hear what you have to say. Oh, that's, oh well, that's thank you so much. I was going to defer to you because you're like <laughs> still in it. Um, I, I, you know, I, I was always very careful, especially on, on the sideline. Um, I started off as a sideline reporter for the Atlanta Hawks and then transitioned to NBA TV. And then I got on the sideline for CBS Sports Network um, for college football and college basketball. So, I mean, I always kept it very, you know, buttoned down with a cool jacket. You know, I try to have a little flair, but everything was always covered up. And I don't think that that was just necessarily as a black woman. I just wanted to make sure that um, we only had a couple of seconds to do what we needed to do to talk about, you know, you do your opening hit, you do injury reports, you do those special interest stories. And then when people come down to you as a black woman, we have so little room for error that we cannot like be in there, like, you know, having on, you know, anything that's crazy. But as time has gone on, we become more confident in who we are. And then like, I don't want to play with whatever rules that this society has 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 written for us and we can do what we want to do. So I'm glad to see the Maria's of the world and also the Carrie champions of the world just doing what they do. And I love it. You sexy, be sexy. I love yes. it because when you right. know, my mommy's always say me, you, clap, clap, you, know, you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, like when you know your stuff and you are, and you, and you know the business and you know the game, it shouldn't really matter what you have on, although we have to, there's a, you know, there's, 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 there's that little line where you still gotta, yeah. you still gotta be yourself, still represent who you are and still make sure that people are not looking here and are looking at you. But I mean, women are women and men are men and you know, how, how everything is kind of going in this world, whatever it is, however you um, identify, you still want to be respected for your knowledge of the game. And um, you don't want to take away from that, but I don't want people to think that you have to, to be in this box when you really don't have to be in that box at all. Right. Even when I was on sister circle, um, I just, for me personally, I didn't want anything that was too low. That was just me. Cause right. I didn't want that. So I think it comes down to personal preference and you know, how you, how you want to present who you are and in that space. And I, I commend any woman 
to do what you do. But we're talking about Maria Taylor. Let's let's right. first talk about how she's the best in the business. Oh, right. yes. she knows the game, not just football. She knows several sports. I have. I don't think I have ever seen Maria more flub. And I, I'm Maria Taylor flub, like, like at all. And not that I'm looking for that, but she knows her stuff. So right. for this guy, first of all, he did it because Black Girl Magic is real. Yes, Black Girl is. Magic is very real. So to see her go from, and she's worked hard for everything that she's gotten from mm -hmm. college, even prior to college game day, how she was fighting to even get into that position, go to college game day, and now you're on Monday Night Football? Yes. Come yes. on. First game. So of course they're going to look at her and be like, well, we got to find something wrong because she's so freaking right. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So of course they're going to do the, all that, but kudos to her. I'm always going to be a champion for black women. I'm mm -hmm. always going to uplift them. And I want us to continue to fight for what we believe in, wear what the hell we want to wear and keep yeah. it moving. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead. And I'm going to build on that um, because I think it is very important. You said just, Imagine being so good at your job, knowing every single detail of what you need to know, you know, having a great rapport with the athletes, the coaches, the staff, the, pro the producers, the other analysts on the set to a point where everyone has your back. You're given the greatest information. So you have to find a way to tear her down by the way that she looks. Yeah. That's just inappropriate. And mm -hmm. she's a fellow ATLian, by the way. So uh, immediately I was like, oh, God, I don't want the east side to come out of me. But at the same time, it's just like we've had enough. I mean, think about it. We've also been in a time in the last year where enough is enough. We're not just going to allow you to, OK, if you have your opinion, everybody's entitled to your opinion. But if your your opinion is misogynist or racist or demeaning our women, then we're going to say something about it. And you should be held accountable for your, you know, for your words. Everyone has an opinion, but it also has consequence. And he has realized that. So for me, I just think that we're talking about shoulders. I'm, you're talking about a plunge line, Rashawn. Like I could see, you know, a skirt that's too high. And for, for Maria, though, you, you talk about shoulders. And I just saw just the other day on a Monday Night Football, you know, host was her shoulders are out. Leather skirt. She looked great. No one said anything about that. So I just feel like, in, in a sense, we just always have to be uh, advocates for our sisters. And even if they are, it doesn't it doesn't matter so much just Black. I think we have to come to the table more because there's this idea that there's only room for one. But honestly, mm -hmm. I think that there's always been this, you know, sisterhood that we found in this in this this business. We have to have each other's back. We there is more room for there's room for more than one just Black you know woman on air. And so I just think. What I've learned, Maria is an advocate for me in my in my career. And so just seeing people tear her down, everything that she's done for everyone else and trying to be the best reporter she can be to to be faced with that. That's one thing. I think she's handled it with so much class. Oh, yeah. Handled it with so much poise and dignity. Her her stepping into even college game day. That was monumental. I think even with her hosting NBA Countdown, yes, roles, um, how they you know celebrate her. Those are the wins that I'm counting. Those are the comments and and the things that I am you know making sure that I am celebrating and talking about because at the end of the day, that's what's most important. Yep. She understands that people have her back. She understands the work that she's putting in, and she is definitely an example. And I love looking at her. I watch her tapes all the time because she's the greatest. She's, she's absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Nice. And it does, I mean, it says something too when even her mentor is Robin Roberts. So I just feel like there's just, for me, the overall overall look, if you feel confident in it, confident in it then you should approach yourself because you look good, you feel good, you're going to work good. Like, I just feel like yeah. that's the way. I remember one time I was like, I don't have any edge control today. And I just felt <laughs> like I was fumbling all over the place. When you feel good and you go on air, that's you and that's your yeah. opinion. So I think she's done a phenomenal job. She looks good and I want her to continue to do that. And she knows the people that are giving her her flowers right now. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And you know what, ladies, this is amazing. So as black women and just black people in general, we've always had to work twice as hard to get to where we want to be or to get our foot in the door. So Rashawn, I could resonate with you how sometimes when um, you said you kind of try to keep it buttoned down a little bit. And although some of that was your preference, you knew going in, there was no, I mean, literally no room for error, right? There was, yeah. they were, were going to look for something. And I think that's what this gentleman did because 
Uh, Maria is so good, so well respected. She's all over the place. Look for a flaw. You can't find one, right? And so he had to tear her down. And I can't help but feel like a lot of that stems from jealousy because he's not that good. He's probably not that good. He, he right. wouldn't last a day. He wouldn't last one day doing what Maria does. And so, I, and whatever people can't control, they sometimes try to destroy right. or you know, manipulate in some other way. So um, I, I feel like some of that's going on, but let's talk about what she actually had on. I thought she looked, listen, smart, beautiful, talented, has the experience and she has swag. I loved it. I thought it looked, I thought it looked really nice. Um, strong, broad shoulders, holding her head up high as she should, as the queen she is. Yeah. Um, I saw nothing wrong with her outfit. Uh, Love E, let me just segue to you a little bit. I mean, you style uh, celebrities and people on air all the time. Uh, do you have any comments or anything about what her dress was and why maybe this gentleman had something to say? No, I think um, I looked it up um, when we decided to do the panel. I looked up to see what exactly she had on. And she had on a cold shoulder and it was leather. So I was thinking maybe he made the reference because it was leather and the cold shoulder. But I thought it was cute. I liked it. It's definitely yeah. something I would wear as well. And then it's sports. It's not like she was reporting politics. I think it's also about where you're going, how you show up. Mm -hmm. So like certain occasions, you're going to wear certain things. I mean, it's Monday Night Football. You know, it's sporty. Why would she show up like she's covering, you know, the election or a debate? So I think she was appropriate for what it was. And like you said, she's beautiful. If she mm -hmm. knows what she's talking about and she's confident in what she was wearing, she looked confident in the pictures I saw of her yeah. wearing it. I thought she looked great. Yes. And everyone in the comments is saying she, um, uh, D Bora was saying she looked good. There was nothing wrong with her outfit. And it wasn't um, even okay. It was literally just cold shoulders. So. I'm sick of people. I don't even. I don't even know why this is. Uh, I mean, I'm glad that we, we have an opportunity <laughs> to come together as women to talk about it. I'm just like, <laughs> this is like if you because because people who are commenting have never had an opportunity to sit down with her at lunch, right. or never had an opportunity to know um, the struggles that we Angel and I have faced, the the, the insecurities that we face, right. the fact that she's still doing what I can no longer do because sideline and me just didn't get along. Um, you know, and, and the insecurities that I face and the things that I went through and Angel knows this all too well, like what they do is absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal. I did it, you know, for quite some time, but it never felt good to my soul to just see them get hit uh, perfectly mm -hmm. right to be able to express their opinion and know the game and know what they're doing. This people don't understand when they come down to you on that sideline. People mm -hmm. don't understand. They feel everybody in America feels like they can do that job when right. they see that. Oh. But when that light comes on and you got to spit out information to make it sound right, be a black woman who knows your sports, who looks right, who stands up straight and not fumble with a 30 second hit. People don't understand the gravity of that. They don't understand how big that is. They try to flip it off like, oh, she's just a girl on the sideline. No, sir. Do you understand that hit had a lot of information that she had to pre-study and to deliver in a certain amount of time before the play starts and send it back so that her voice is not over the play unless instructed to. People don't understand this. So when people have things to say about what people are wearing, they don't understand the preparation that goes into that one single hit. Right. So this yeah. is personal to me. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. And you and I and I I watch it and I listen. I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, how did they remember all those? Exactly. Things? How it's like how do you remember? It's like no, like listen. Even in school, we had history that itself was hard enough. But you're talking about something that's forever changing, forever ongoing. New stats, new players, new games, new this, and just to be on top of that game, to be able to speak so eloquently and just like have those good solid speaking points in the right moment like it's punchy just punchy with it and to deliver that content that is hard or breaking hard. news like you're yes. hey this just came out can you do a hit about it um in a minute and it's like okay so i have to have all the information and not right. only that it's the fact that i just want people to understand my passion for this game is well beyond what i have on like <laughs> i this is when they say ball is like this it's real i don't know if i can you were excellent. Okay. And it's real. Like I've, I've, I've literally lived this game. I have been around the people, the coaches. I understand what it's like to be an athlete and to just give everything. So it's, it's literally an honor to share their stories. Yeah. So to me, like, I want to get it right. 
because it's not just the fans, it's them too. I have to continue to ha hold their respect, you know, because they're listening, the coaches are listening, their wives, the children, everyone is listening. So, I mean, even in a time where social media, everybody has an opinion, like you have to have that thick skin of just like, okay, I know what I've done. And so from my mm -hmm. attitude too, like, I've had to develop a thick skin and I just remember just crying all the time. And it's just like, after a while, you got to get through it. Yeah. Like yeah. you have people that are looking to you. You have, you have to be that example and you can get through it. And so for me, I, it, I'm right there with Rashawn. It's the most aggravating thing when someone's talking about um, a shoulder or, or whatever the case may be, when you know how much time has gone into making your craft as yes you know, seamless as possible with the 15 seconds that you have. And so, and, and then also just being more than the pretty face. So there, she's just there for the pretty mm -hmm. face. No, it's because I know this game. Yeah. I've given my everything to this game. And I think that's a, a, a direct correlation with, with Maria Taylor and what we've been saying about her. But I will say this even, I'm the type of person where at, at the beginning I was like wearing the blazers and just trying to, you know, be more the corporate. But I feel like in this time too, everything's changing. You're seeing guys that are not wearing, you know, the typical wing toe shoes. They're not as buttoned up. Some may go without a tie. That wasn't heard of, you know, years ago. And so now they're even wearing sneakers. You're seeing guys that can get away with wearing sneakers on set. It's just like, whatever. So for me, I was just like, how am I comfortable? How do I bring my own swag? And they hired me. They didn't hire anybody else. So I'm going to just show my personality. You may see me in a suit and tie. I remember the first time I did that, they were like, what? It's like, this is what you get. You may see me in a dress, but that's just how I choose to feel. I, I refuse to go on air trying to be someone else. Yeah. I don't know. think I'll be there very long. But see, that's why people love watching you. You are your true authentic self. The information, I mean, you're very knowledgeable, but it comes, it comes across in a way that's you. And that's, I think that's what viewers really want to hear because sometimes I see some, you know, some people are very charismatic, but they really don't have, I hate to say this, but sometimes it's not a lot of substance what they're saying, but just their personality comes across. Nobody wants to talk to somebody who's boring, dry, and all of those things, right? So the messenger is very important to this. Yeah. Um, but let me also just kind of uh, swing this a little bit. We saw that when we had Michelle, when Barack and Michelle were in office, Michelle, as beautiful as she was, they gave her grief too about what she wear. The first lady, as educated as she was in the position that she was in, on all those important initiatives that she worked on, they still gave her grief about the things that she wore in her fashion. So what is this, ladies? What is this about fashion um, and our positions? Do you think that um, America is just, you know, tardy to the party when it's coming to the evolving fashion and being more acceptive about what people are wearing? Or do you think it's just because we're black women that we're extra being picked on because of, you know, other, you know, racial and, um, well, we, we don't we don't fit into we don't fit into their uh, their outline of who we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So um, look at the look at the four women here. OK, we we are all different hair. We're all different types. We're all different. We can't see our bodies. We're all different um, sizes. We're, we're so absolutely stunning in all of our ways. Yes. And some people cannot stomach that they just simply cannot stomach the fact that we are so incredibly beautiful and mm -hmm. let it be, let it be known. This is from back when they bought us over here. We've always been, been, uh, I'm trying to find a way to say it. Fly. We've been <laughs> desired by all people, by all people, yes. including the slave owners. So let's yes. not get it twisted. We've always been the one yes. who has been the most desired. So that is not, so, so to, to, to take that, to make you feel good mm -hmm. that you don't want to desire me, you got to say things to make yourself feel better, better about what you truly desire deep down in your side. So when people have things to say about you, it's not you, it's truly them. It's true, yeah. So I don't think it has much to do with, um, you know, what we're wearing. It's just the desire deep inside that they truly want to be more like us. They want to be so much more like us. They they tan, they do, and, and this is oh, not yeah. an attack on anybody white, but what Let's I'm saying is um, <laughs> you will do everything black until it comes to walking in our shoes. Yeah. Oh yes, that's true. Okay, including yeah. our music, 
and everything else. What? You do everything that leads up into a day to walk in our shoes. You will never take away the, the, the biggest organ on our body, which is our skin, and mm -hmm. trade it with yours to walk in it. So it's bigger than just, are they not catching up with our fashion? Of course, they were going to try to find something wrong with um, our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, mm -hmm. because she was a black woman and she wasn't your um, typical. I'm, I'm not saying let me let me get this right. because I don't want to offend even my sisters. But you know how society puts certain women, black women on a higher pedestal than other black women. She wasn't that typical look, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. That you would you 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 know that that, that that most people would be like oh she's acceptable kind of thing mm -hmm. no Michelle had her hair she had a, she didn't get braces she didn't do any of that for y'all okay <laughs> she was Michelle right. yeah, and yeah. still is right there you go. yeah so um, let's talk about it. let's let's, 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 let's let finish this fashion thing though because I for sure I do feel like there's something that's still there um, although so we as black women didn't fit what America, America's ideals, I guess, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna continuously try to chop us down because as you said, they probably secret, they desire us. So they're gonna try to, you know, shoot us down. But what about our fashion? Because there are some times where uh, what the environment that we're in, the work that we're doing, um, where our fashion and what we wear does play a role because actually, and I wanna pull this up, there's research that shows that the clothes you wear actually change the way you perform. Mm -hmm. So obviously I'm just bringing this on you guys, but as Angel, you mentioned earlier, you know, when you didn't have that edge control that day, you felt like you were a little scattered all over the place. It is okay. like, right? Yeah. Your confidence, yeah. um, which can impact other things. Do you think that, um, I'm trying to say this in, in, in a nice, in a nice but still direct way, do you think that uh, we as women sometimes, and not in the Maria case, so let's let's say with that, sometimes push the envelope a little bit in what we wear um, in the workplace? Um, and I don't know. I, I'm just gonna leave it right there. Do you guys think that sometimes there there's there's some women that push the envelope with what we wear, and maybe it's not appropriate to wear in certain places? I always go by this. Like if I have to second guess it or if I have to question it, then it's probably not a good idea. Mm. So for me, that's just as simple as it is. Like there's a lot of cute dresses that I have where I don't want the focus to be on so much. Oh, is that all of her leg? Like I love my legs, but at the end of the day, I want the focus to be on work for me. Yeah. So that's just where I am most comfortable. I am getting, I'm all over the place sometimes in these arenas as, as, Rashawn knows you may be behind the bench. You may be like on the second level in media. You still have to come down. You got to get back to the locker room. So I want to be comfortable. To me, it's okay. not just so there much you know. about so That's much about, you know, how tight fit or whatever. I, I just want to feel comfortable in what I'm wearing. And mm -hmm. I also want to to be an example in a sense. And I know everyone has their own style. But for me, I just wanted to breathe like a fresh, vibrant, swagged out look. Um, to, to the younger women too that are coming up. And mm -hmm. so to me, to, to me, I, I don't necessarily want my chest out or too much of my skin showing because I don't want there to be a distraction. And I know it's like, okay, well, why do we have to control, you know, dim our light for them to, you know, act right? Well, that's just for me too, just being comfortable in, in, in a male dominated industry. Yeah, I, think I know I'm going into the locker rooms and stuff like that. So whether you believe it or not, those eyes will be on you. And I want the, mm -hmm. those eyes to always have that trust and that respect of just like angels here. And it may be sweats and maybe a suit and maybe a dress, but we know what she brings to the table. Mm -hmm. right. And I think you said some key things you felt. So you feel comfortable. Um, and so you're able to, you know, maneuver um, in the way that you need to without being too revealing or, you know, showing some, you know, if like, if you have to climb some stairs, you're not in some little itty bitty mini skirt trying to do those things. And you guys, I'm not, I'm not in this. I'm not, I'm not ridiculing anyone or speaking down on anyone on what they wear, but we are really talking about what we wear and where we wear it and uh, why that's important. Because even though you could be solid inside and out, knowledgeable, skilled, and all of those things, sometimes it is true. What we wear, um, we will be judged by what we wear. Yeah. But they say don't judge a book by its cover, but 
Let's be honest. People do it all the time. They get that first impression and don't even know. you. Haven't sat down, hadn't said two words to you, but they they judge you based on what you wear. So sometimes, and I think there's a, there's there's a fine line with this, especially when you're meeting someone for their first time or doing something for their first time or entering into a particular uh, workforce or area, uh, we have to be mindful of what we're wearing until we've learned the landscape, feel, you know, learn the culture, and then you know, kind of know what those rules, informal rules are, so we don't put ourselves in a compromising position. So, Love E, um, what's been your experience with with uh, what we're talking about with this? Type yeah, of that's what I was gonna <laughs> say. With me and styling with my clients, it's not even so much about fashion as much as it's about personal style because I work yeah. a lot with professionals. Yeah. So like you said, I work with a lot of clients that are anchors and they appear on TV. And so dressing for TV is not the same as dressing for real life because it's going to be distorted. Prints, right. Certain prints don't show up. Certain colors don't show up. Then you're talking about skin tone and lighting and how the cameras are lighting black people, oh, is, white people and the whole nine. But the other thing is, we really get into the mindset behind style because it's always like, you know, well, what does it matter what I wear? But light travels faster than sound. So people see you before you speak. And there, there are studies that show that people make 11 assumptions about you in the first seven seconds of meeting you. So it's right. like, what do you want them to see? Do you want them right. to see professional, confident, capable, competent? Or you want them to see sloppy, disheveled, conflicted, confused? So you want to make sure that you're showing up how you want to be seen in the world. So I always encourage my clients that they're going to show up as the best version of themselves, not just like me, not just like the next client, but whatever is the best version for them. Because my clients are all different skin tones, height, sizes. I work with clients from a size zero to a size 28. So what the zero is wearing is not the same thing with the 28, right. but they're both showing up as their most confident self. Because when you look good, you feel good, you're going to do good. And so mm -hmm. that's just, you know, what it is. Okay. Nice. Now, she said a whole word there. <laughs> she did. She did. Yeah. Um, and well, let me let's uh, ping off of confidence yeah. because um, I think sometimes confidence is so subjective because you can be knowledgeable, smart, like really on top of your game, but you cannot have you may not have lack. You, you may lack the confidence. Um, and so, you know, I know when I'm not comfortable in what I'm wearing or something don't fit right, if it's a little too tight or it's just then uncomfortable. I lack, yeah, I lack the confidence. Um, and then you have some women, they can wear anything and have that the most confidence. And when I think of that, I think of Lizzo. I'm sorry, but I think of Lizzo and her her extreme confidence. Um, and let's take it even outside of just what we wear, but even with, you know, um, our, our hair, our body shapes and those type of things. Having that confidence and understanding how beautiful you are um, can sometimes be an issue with this because we wear things because we want to look good, right? But even beyond the clothes, the beauty starts inside. And I think that's a lot of uh, where we need to kind of, uh, you know, dig down and get to because sometimes we don't even need to wear all that stuff because we're beautiful already. But we wear it because we lack the confidence. I think too, just when we're around our sisters, when our culture, like when we're, we gravitate towards one another, we understand it. So we're comfortable in it. But it's different for a black woman that is in a room of, you know, older white men. They don't mm -hmm. understand it. Your confidence may be shaken a little bit because they don't get it, but they're also the ones in charge. So they right. kind of dictate what things are going on. Right. I remember in one of my um, interviews, I had them straight out ask me how I was going to wear my hair. Oh, now, I could have completely said, you know, whatever you want, you know, <laughs> But I, I think with me, I come from a long line of very confident, like strong women. And so it's just like what you see is what you get. Um, but I'm also putting a lot into what you get. So for me, I'm a black woman. And my response was it may be straight. It may be curly. It may be in braids. It depends on how I feel that day. Could have probably heard a pin drop. But at the end of the day, that's what it is. And I can't fake it for anybody else. So I just feel like with that confidence, it, it can be shaken sometimes. You, yeah. You're constantly seeing other, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. this ideal of what it looks to be like in our profession. And you just want to be right. You want to be, you know, valued, to be honest. You know what that, you know? how, how do you, I mean, that's like a lot of pressure, a lot of additional pressure on top of having to be so knowledgeable and perform on air, right? Like live. <laughs> Like, how do you deal with all of that pressure? 
That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shoot, uh, wine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I, I'm going to be very transparent. For me, my first year, especially just being on a, a bigger scale with even NBA, I was kind of shaken in just having the fans and like who I'm replacing and what that person looked like and who I'm working with. There's not a lot of people that will understand where I'm coming from. I don't want to be the whiny black girl. Like, so to me, it was just this buildup of anxiety. I had to be perfect. There, there's no, if I mess up, I'm like thinking about it for three days straight. And it's just like, we put so much pressure on ourselves so much. to be perfect that we drive ourselves crazy. Mm -hmm. And I remember the day and I was like, I was literally, cause like when the national anthem comes on, I'm always like, okay, let me say my prayer and let, let me get straight to it. Um, I remember saying, you know, I know who I am and whose I am and you've done the work. Mm -hmm. So for me, even coming on camera, I have to just crack a smile. Like, I don't know. I think they're like, Angel, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at something because I have to remember the joy that I have for doing my job. Right. You know, and so for me, if, if just that smile helps somebody else and that helps me calm down, even if it's just for that second, I'll take it because I do think that still I'm working my way through this industry, understanding who I am in this industry, how I can continue to build and, and, and build my brand and be me. Um, unapologetically, but it, it it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Um, and, and I need other people to lean on. Like I can't continue. I can't do this by myself that I, we talk about all the time. I'm sad this show is off, but sister circle is a real thing. I remember we had like a, yes. a lunch together and how empowered I felt, how full I felt just knowing that I had other people that had my back. And we may be in different cities, but I always felt that, that, support in that strength. So if there was a moment where I didn't feel like I could pull myself out of it, I knew that I could go to someone else. Yeah, so. that's so true. Like um, among the sideline reporters or women in sports, um, a lot of us are very, are very connected um, from LaChina Robinson, who both um, Angel and I are very good friends with, um, to the L Duncans of the world and Carrie Champions and Jamel Hill and um, and Tiffany, um, Tiffany Green, like we all are like, there's, there is, there is a commonality, there's a common space where we can have to talk to one another, especially when I was really, really um, in, into the sports world, but we had each other. And I remember I made a horrible mistake on air on CBS Sports Network. And I literally was like, oh, this is the demise of me. And literally that was like the, the impetus of me saying, okay, this is not, this is not my thing. Um, I called Carrie and I was like, I need you to look at this hit. She looked at it. She was like, it's not as bad as you think. But then, you know, I got I literally got taken off that package because of that. And literally, when I tell you, there's so little room for error when it comes to black women. Um, and I know had it been their beautiful, you know, you know, blonde hair sideline reporter who made that mistake, she would have stayed on that particular package. I know that for a fact, but I had little room for era, but I, but I was able to call these people. I literally called Jamel right after that. I'm like, y'all help me. Cause I don't, I don't think this is it. <laughs> but and I felt comfortable when, when, cause Jamel did, Jamel did um, sideline for one season for ESPN. She was like, sis, <laughs> I ain't like it either. And so I was like, yeah, you're right. But so that's why I commend, I commend Angel and I commend LaChina. I commend all of the women that I know that are still in the game continuing to, and, and Maria continuing to do it because y'all, like I said in the beginning of this conversation, it is not an easy job. People think it is and they're like, I can do that. Do it. I would love to see you try. I would really yeah. love to see you try. When that red light comes on and you got bands and you got cheerleaders and you got your producer and you sometimes you don't yes. like working with this producer because he's going to count you down in the middle of your last you know, the, your last stop, 15, 10, and you're right. like, ah, and you wrap got to it, it right, right, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, and you're like trying to say your thought and listen to the count. That thing is difficult. It's right. a lot going on. I commit, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm very animated. Did I get to that? Oh, no, 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 I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Angel having a PTSD over there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real thing. So it's a you know. So I just I just commend my sisters in it. My sisters and my you know everybody, any woman that's in this space, from the Michelle Tafoyas, like who I love, you know, all everybody. It's not easy being down there. And right. so to give you some flack about this whole conversation that gave us the reason to meet tonight is mm -hmm. is just ludicrous to me. Yeah. Right.
Um, I'm going to share some um, some comments. Yeah. Uh, Marcia said the best thing a woman can wear is her confidence. I Absolutely. Think we all can agree with that. Um, but it's also important as what you heard from the ladies on here, um, having um, kind of that support group, that network, that sisterhood, someone you can lean on, call and cry to. And yes. then you know, let, go ahead and get it out, but then don't cry tomorrow. We, okay, that's going to be done with right. it tonight. Like, and give you that feedback. So that's important. Yes. Um, so we have some other comments here. And let's see how you uh, maybe feel is what you put on some days. You just want to be casual and another day you want to dress up. Doesn't mean you lack anything. It's all about one's mindset. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I believe yeah. that because some days I'm in like J's in a cute sporty dress or <laughs> yoga pants. Yeah. And then yep. before this interview, I went and got this little dress that I got from a thrift store. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's a Betsy Johnson. It was on sale for twenty dollars. That's true. Right. Anything. <laughs> the, um, feminist says so. I guess let's just say we're not free. I Ooh. think that's about earlier. Ooh, listen, that's a whole nother line. Ooh. Um, because I do feel like there are some extra conditions that mm. are placed upon us. Some extra, you know, hoops that we have to jump through to get. Uh, unlike some of our um, other counterparts, right? Yeah. From the, the, the other side um but um let's see uh so you know what we're well let me not <laughs> we're gonna have a whole other conversation well, that may be true. <laughs> you said um pencil skirt won't like this um won't, won't look the same I think. you know what so wait a minute so that's a good one let's yeah. get into some of this fashion stuff because listen i know we were we, what we were talking about but i do feel like i want some fashion tips out of this real quick yeah. so like um, things like this pencil skirt. I mean, all the listen, I don't even know. So, I was gonna ask by myself, but I shouldn't be so selfish. <laughs> no, but, go like, ahead. Tips. Um, do you have like what's in fashion right now, especially with everybody in COVID 19? Nobody's going out. Like, what is in fashion? Well, because, like, the the world, world, it's been open for a minute, I'm a pants, but I got like, on. On. <laughs> like, what is really in fashion? Yeah. I always, my number one thing I tell clients is what looks good on you is always in style. So what mm. looks good on you is always in style. And style is like the circle of life, the circle of style. Everything that comes in style will go back in, out of style and come back in style. So example, polka dots, big trend back in like the 80s, I think. And now it's back in again. So everything eventually will come back in style. Mm -hmm. I think it's just all about how you're wearing the clothes and you got to dress for your body type, your personality. So the pencil skirt is not for everybody. And then, like she said, different body types can do different things. Like, I know I'm more bottom heavy than top heavy. So what I'm wearing on the bottom half, it may look a little bit more provocative on somebody that doesn't have as much hips or thighs or butt. So it's just all about, and if you have bigger boobs, it's the same thing. It's harder for somebody with a bigger bosom to wear button downs because it does that gapping thing because you have bigger breasts. So it's about knowing how to dress for the body that you have. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Now, here's a question Colleen uh, says, has, do black men in the industry have these kind of struggles? No. <laughs> Come on. Like, no. So <laughs> as, you, as you were mentioning, some of the guys are getting away with like, uh, uh, Angel, you were talking about, so what they're wearing in studio and on set. So it's becoming more casual and more casual. Yeah, but not that casual. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> like, I, I think you'll see the occasional like sneaker or just that's where we're going because even now that you can uh, make it profitable, even for the, the, you know, the teams or the players that are coming through, we want to see what they're walking through, through the tunnel, what they're looking like. Like you can, oh, yeah. you can make money off of fashion. That's a, a big part of just what's working for social. So mm -hmm. I think like a lot of, you know, Broadcasts have bought into that as well and just want to be comfortable. It's a different time, a different style, and it's emphasized. But I think it's still suit. Like, okay, I don't have to wear a tie, great grand, but I'm still going to wear a shirt that I can, you know, just kind of, it's going to have a collar or I can wear a jacket. It's open. It's not going to be a three piece, maybe. But I think just with women, it's if you feel like comfortable with the three piece or you don't, you want don't want to wear the tie, mm -hmm. that's just your choice. And there's like a spectrum. So I just think that, I mean, with guys, Mm -hmm. Top, bottom, but I do like the fashion <laughs> it's like runway for them. I like to see what they have on. Carlos yeah. has a comment here. Uh, Shireen Ferreira, actually, Kamala was smart to wear Converse and those Timberland shoes for comfort, especially considering she was doing a lot of walking. Yeah. So, 
where fashion meets comfort. Now, I think, <laughs> and I don't know, I'm just going to go ahead and assume. I think we've all maybe been in a situation where we sacrificed comfort for the fashion of it. Maybe it didn't last too long. Maybe those shoes had to, you kicked off those shoes and had your house shoes in your little purse. But there are times where we have all compromised comfort for fashion. But um, in, 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 these, in, in my time now, I don't do that. I did it when I was a lot younger, but I don't do that now. My feet are like, no, nah, since we're not doing that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I love, I love having on a good flat. A good, <laughs> I love the outfit, uh, Senator Kamala Harris or, you know, our potential, our, our potential vice president yes. um, had on. I thought it was great. And it's crazy though. Um, this may be off topic, but the media is like, the Timberland boots, they're making, she's making them popular. I'm like, I got I'm saying, we're wearing Timberland every, I'm like, y'all, they just don't know. We've they been wearing Timberland. <laughs> every dude in New York is waiting for the temperature to drop or right. not. <laughs> that's your exactly. black snow boot. Right. I, but, I, but that's because I, our, culture, on that our culture makes such an impression. Like we are yeah. we are trendsetters in yeah. what we of do. Of course. We are. We are. So yeah. um you're right. Yeah, my feet, my feet can't take it. My feet can't take it anymore. I always have on some, you know, I'll you know, I'll wear the 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 you know, put on the heels for the actual show, but right. it's soon. I'm like Patty. As soon as as soon as it's over, I am slipping into something that is much more comfortable. My feet are just not. I'm 45. My feet are too. Okay. <laughs> so I just remember being at one of my games, and I was just like, okay, well, I have my travel bag, which I usually have my sweatpants and my like shoes, and we get on the plane, we fly back, whatever. But I just remember a game trying to be cute, having little red bottoms, and I love heels. I love them to death. But there are certain times where you're just like, it's, it's enough is enough. Right. And I remember I put my concourse on. <laughs> And the reaction, even from the team, security, like they were like, yo, sis got all the concords, you know? And it was just like, it was almost like they respected that more. That made yeah. me a bit more human and like the girl next door than when I'm wearing heels. Right. Like, I need to rock that more often. And to a point where I had other people, if I were to go to a different arena, say, mm -hmm. oh man, I thought we were going to get the J's. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> a sneaker head like that. It was more comfortable. And that's what I rocked with. But it, it mm -hmm. is a thing. Like if, if you're confident in it, everybody else will get on board. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I'm, I'm the queen of a dress and a J. A queen. Okay. <laughs> you got to be comfortable. Yeah. You know how far we walking? Okay, let me put on these tennis shoes real quick. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, another comment from Anne Eugene. She said, "It's never e It's is never an easy job in a man's world for a woman, even if she's doing a great job." That would be true. I think everyone on this panel uh, will agree with you. Um, so take the fact that we're women, but also black women, imagine how much harder, like I said earlier, we're, we're having to work twice as hard to get, you know, uh, our due respect. Now, here's a comment. Um, M. DeCarlos Dixon, she said, like everyone else, we want to be taken seriously and respected for what we bring to the table. Yet I see so many professional photos just oozing with sexiness. Yes, we have crazy swag, but some of this, I believe, is intentional. Mm. And, and black people meet should have different photos. What's I am? In my opinion. In my opinion. In my opinion. Okay. Well, wait, LinkedIn and black people meet are two totally different types of black people. Right. It's, that's what she's saying, too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what she's saying. What Blazer else? one, another one might be to, yeah. you know. Oh. Have you guys seen that meme where they have like four boxes? You like yes. your Instagram, your Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Twitter, your LinkedIn. Tinder, and Facebook. Right. Yes. And Facebook exactly looks fa um, family oriented. The LinkedIn looked professional and the Tinder had looked sexy. Yeah. I think that's just to your point. When and where. Photos. Yeah. When and where. You got to know wh what's your go to. Yeah. So, yeah. Any, any rules or any suggestions for people when they're trying to determine? Uh, uh, the when and the where, because I think everything has its place, yes. has its right environment um, and situation. You take the wrong outfit, put it in the wrong situation, they're going to take a whole nother story. Yep, yep, so, yep. Um, right. Let's see. So, Love E, do you have any tips on yeah. when, when does a professional business attire become something more social? 
Oh, well, I've seen these things where people want some of them wear an outfit. They do something a little too it twisted yeah. up real quick. Boom. Yeah. And they're out. Yeah. To the I think it's a lot of things you can do that can take you from day to night. A blazer is one of my favorites, or it used to be one of my favorites back when we actually left the house a lot more. <laughs> you could wear something that may have been like maybe the cami or the shirt was a little bit lower, or maybe it was spaghetti strapped or whatever, but you threw that mm-hmm. blazer over it from the day. And by the time you get the cocktail hour, you take the blazer off, switch your accessories or shoes, and now you're ready for night. So I think it's just all about dressing to where you're going. Like at the end of the day, we're all grown. We have different places we're going. What I'm gonna wear on date night is not what I'm wearing to church or whatnot. Or what I'm wearing to the office is not what I'm wearing to kick it with my girlfriends. So I think it's about knowing, and we all know, like um, I think one of y'all were saying earlier, like, hey, if I feel like it's questionable, I probably should just go ahead and let, like if it feels like, you know what, this might be a little too short once I sit down or when I start walking, it's going to start rising, then maybe I probably just need to save it for another occasion, save it for later. So it's better to err on the side of caution. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you definitely want to show up as yourself. And during this time, a lot of people are way more comfortable. I think you can't associate comfortableness with being a slob, though. So I think you can't get carried away. I'm trying to be comfortable. You can be comfortable and still be stylish, still be put together, still be cute. Like I used to wear the heels all the time. And like y'all were saying, I'm getting older too now. And in this pandemic, we're not even having to wear them. Now when I do put them on, it feels even different because I haven't had to wear them for months. And so it's like, okay, you know what? I want to wear some wedge heels instead of stilettos. I want to wear um, a stag heel or I want to wear a lower heel than what I normally used to do. Um, But I think it's just important to know yourself, know what works for you, still be stylish, show your personality, show up and be comfortable. I stress to my clients all the time, like I'm dressing you as the best version of you. And some of them are like, I want to be dressed up like doggone Vogue runway and other people like, look, I just want to be comfortable. I want to. And some people are more conservative. Some people are edgy, but it's all about keeping people in the lane that makes them feel good. And then yeah. I just stretch them with new ideas or opening them up to new things that they can do. But mm-hmm. I'm all for a cute wedge sneaker, a cute J. My daughter collects sneakers. So we're not the same shoe size, unfortunately. But I've <laughs> bought more sneakers and invested in more sneakers in the last five years than I ever did in like my 20s. So Right. So, I mean, we have a comment here from Sharnice. The blazer uh, is a go-to for anything. Um, earlier, Rashawn, uh, Someone was mentioning that um, the thrifting, uh, yeah. like they, you know, a thrift shop would go a long way. You can get a few things there. Um, you get more bang for your buck. Yeah. We got sneaker queens here from Rhonda. Yes. Um, Shereen said women can make their own, make their own, make their outfits their own. Yes, you yes. can. Yeah. Yes, you can. Um, I, you know, I'm just. <laughs> I remember we had, it, it's so funny to me. I remember we had uh, Women's Month mm-hmm. and all the men decided what color we were going to wear. So it was funny for the broadcast. They were like, oh I already had, you know, the, the outfit I was going to wear. I was going to wear this banging suit. It was like, yes. And they were like, but we're purple. And I was like, oh, okay. So I remember going in my closet and I was like, but I'm going to make this my own little thing. And I remember getting a patch, like this is for a broadcast, by the way, I made my own outfit. I got a patch, ironed it on. I had like another patch that was like, the women can do anything one. I had Wonder Woman on the other side. Yes. Then bought like a, went straight on to one of those thrift shops and bought a, a purple tie. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, this will work. And I like had a pleated like long dress. Yes. So like right at the, right at the leg or whatever. But I just remember um, the moment stepping out, knowing that like, I I feel great. First of all, no one has this. (laughs) Second of all, just like this attitude of just woman power. Like this is what I wanted to feel like. I didn't, no one else told me what to wear, but I kind of like made it my own. I think that's important to just understanding your your style. Like I I absolutely think, encourage that. I love it. I I love, the fact I just love how diverse women are and I love the diversity that I am able to if you look on my timeline on on my on my Instagram page you'll see all types of versions of who I am yeah. from a sexy photo shoot that I did a couple of weeks ago 
to literally having on some Adidas and a hooded um, mm -hmm. signature dress that I partnered with one of my um, um, sorority sisters with yesterday, like and, and anything in between and, and, and having on a swimsuit and being just really confident in who I am and being okay with who I am. And it took me a while to get there, guys. It didn't, this didn't happen overnight. This didn't happen, you know, with a snap of a finger. I had to get to that point where I felt so good in whatever I was wearing, no matter what it was. But I feel like, you know, style to me doesn't, is not, they're, they're not labels. And I know Lovey can tell you that. I can go down to the Target or the, uh, or just like I said, to, 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 yeah, yeah. to a thrift store or, to Dillard's or whatever yeah. and, and find something that makes me look good. And I also wanted to right. say, even if you're small, you still got to dress for your size. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because yes. everything that's your size, even if you're a two or four, does it not look good your body. Yes. There you go. That is very true. I know what that's looks good on my body. If something is going to hug <laughs> this part right here too much, when I've been drinking too much or not working out, it ain't going to be right. Yeah. No. And you got to know that. No matter what size you are. Over it. That's what you're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Deborah has a comment here. She said, this is so important. Having sisters in our network who are supportive of each other, encourage each other and speak the truth oh, to each other. So this is what we were, yes. Yes. So this is this is exactly what we were hoping to bring to you. Um, and Horace said, great uh, job, lady. Strong show. And you guys, the show, I mean, the guests make the show. They Their expertise, their knowledge. Um, everything that they have to share. And I'm so sad that we're actually coming up no. on our hour here. So, um, <laughs> but you know what, you know, uh, we, um, we, we're here to, I, I love doing this because every Monday, although it's a Facebook live, um, some people might say it's kind of like, you know, TV show ish, you're supposed to be, you know, I'm listen, like we, have, we have our adult beverages <laughs> with us. We are relaxed. We are having sister talk. We are being comfortable. You know, <laughs> and just call, listen, keeping it real. We have Sean water. But um, this has been a, a, a really great conversation, and I appreciate that we've been able, although the re the the reason why we had this conversation because of what happened to Maria was unfortunate. Um, yeah. it gave us a chance to talk about it, raise awareness, and then segue into some fashion things um and talk about some do's and some don'ts. So Thank you, Love E, for sharing that. And also to Rashawn and Angel for sharing their experience. I know you guys have been working, um, you know, relentlessly on, on television and media, but then also to have that experience in sports, male dominated, on the sidelines, the pressure. And I wish we could replay Rashawn doing the, uh, the, the <laughs> countdown and everything. The, <laughs> right. the Don't play that back, please. <laughs> But it's real, guys. So, I mean, being even doing this live isn't as always as easy as what people think because oh, you yeah, know, you have anxiety inside. Like you want to come across, you notice how I pause a couple times. I'm like, let me make sure I say this right because I don't want nobody to come for me. Uh, there's a lot of pressure, it um, is, but I have to say, I am I am so excited. I'm I was I'm so proud to have had these ladies on the panel this evening. It's been a wonderful conversation. So if we could do kind of a, a ring around the roses here about and tell the people where they can find you, what you're working on and what's next, um, we'd love to do that. So um, Angel, do you want to start? I guess so. Yeah, of course. First off, thank you so much for having me. This has been phenomenal. Um, I just, this is a breath of fresh air. So thank you. And then thank you for everyone for joining us. Um, right now, I'm just waiting to see when NBA is getting back. So that, that's it? really <laughs> you know, for my team. But um, yeah. outside of that, what's next for me is just like gearing up for, you know, women's hoops um, for ESPN and seeing what's going on there. But then also just feeding, feeding myself as far as like taking care of myself. Yes. So this time is so important. I don't want to get so caught up in like what's next for work. I think this time is what's next for me to just really find who I am and just relax. So, uh, yes, my name is Angel Gray. You can find me on Angel underscore Gray one on Twitter and then Angel Gray. It's like three A's that the, my teammates used to do it all the time. Angel Gray um, on Instagram. OK, so there you go. Uh, Rashawn. Sure, I'll do it real quickly. Um, uh, you can find me at Rashawn Ali everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook. Um, I'm flowing and growing, um, you know, in media, you, uh, you're, you're up, you're down and you just keep pushing through. I have several, several projects that I'm working on. Um, and if you follow my page, then you'll be 
privy to that information, but I've been, uh, I'm just so very happy to have been a part of this tonight and I'm very grateful to share space with you ladies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And love E. Yes. Um, again, thank y'all for having me. I enjoyed the conversation with y'all and everyone's viewpoints. It was just great to get together with other women and be supportive of each other. Um, you can find me at Love Ivanya on Instagram and loveyfashion.com is my website. So you can find all my other social media outlets as well. Um, I am a personal stylist. So right now we are working on our personal style app that we want to make style accessible to everyone, not just yeah. celebrities, not just entertainment. Yeah. So with the personal style app, anybody can order a stylist off of the app. Someone from my team will come out, shop for them, deliver and style them, especially if you don't want to go out in these times yes. all with hundreds of other people. My stylist will go out, shop for you, show up with the mask, the gloves and make sure you're safe and still showing up stylish for all your virtual calls or when you're actually going out social distancing. So we're all about promoting style to everyone. And that is what I'm working on. Love you. I love the tone of your voice. I uh, love thank it. Thank you. Thank I you. Love it's it. funny. Um, we've met a couple of times, but yeah. a lot of my friends are um Tracy Nicole. Oh she yeah. Corner for me. Yes. From Funky Flair. They're your sorority sisters. Yeah. So, I love Tracy. Oh yes. Lord. <laughs> love me though. It's I knew I knew your it. face when we first came on the stream, y'all. And yes. I knew I knew your face. <laughs> yes, yes. I think the last time I saw you in person was at Bio Bio, and it was like a women's. Oh, movie. yes. I remember I that event. Yep. 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 Oh, sorry, y'all. I, yeah, I, I was like, I was just like, oh. <laughs> so, yes. I'm not AKA, but I have so many AKAs. Yes. 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 Right. Right. It's all good. Thanks. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You guys, um, this has been amazing. Um, I'm Nurse Alice. We do the. Uh, Exam room with uh, Nurse Alice here on BlackRock.org Facebook Live every Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we talk about all the things that you want to talk about. We take a closer look at things going on in the world today, regardless of how crazy they are, how silly they are. But the point is to educate and to empower people um, so that they can make uh, better choices and live happier and healthier lives. Um, I'm Nurse Alice. This has been an amazing uh, panel. And I want to thank uh, my guests for your uh, being so wonderful and giving us a, such great information and to everybody who's watching please make sure to share the live um repost it you know there's some great information um and this is good it's important for us to kind of fellowship and network with each other um you know talk you know we did a little kiki and a little laughing you know share some information uh we're able to vent a little bit and that's what it's all about right because yeah. we need the support group so um, to everyone who's watching, thank you so much. This has been the exam room with Nurse Alice. Thank you to blackdoctor.org. And thank you to my lovely guests, um, Angel Gray, Rashawn Ali, and Love E for joining us. And to everyone, you all make good choices. Wash your hands, wear your masks, and be safe. And until next time, see y'all next Tuesday Bye. and Monday. Bye. Bye.